In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful honeycomb blanket using Tunisian crochet. To start, you're going to need a Tunisian crochet hook, two sizes larger than the recommended gauge on your yarn. In my instance, I'm going to be using a worsted weight yarn, so I'm going to use an eight millimeter hook. Here's my beautiful worsted weight yarn that I've chosen. It's a lovely color of yellow. I can't remember the brand. I bought it a while ago and I've thrown away the label because I do things sometimes that I don't understand. So I'm going to pull out a generous length of yarn here and I'm going to leave myself a pretty good tail so I can weave in the ends at the end and my work will be secure and nothing will fall apart. So I'm going to start with a slip knot, insert my hook into that slip knot, and now we're ready to start chaining. So I'm going to chain any number of stitches. It depends on how big you want your blanket. For my case, I'm going to be making a preemie blanket. So I'm going to do about 40 to 42 stitches. I think I end up on 42. I'm going to be making a ton of baby blankets to donate to my local Woman's Emergency or Woman's Mercy Center, I think it is. Um, I think right now in this in, in the current climate, women need as much support as they possibly can have, especially in terms of of pregnancies, uh, whether they expect them or don't expect them. I think I think women need all the support they can get right now. So, um, doing doing what I can is important. So once you've chained as many stitches as you need to create the width of the blanket that you're going to want, this is what you should have. So you have your nice little chain foundation. And we're ready to start working into our chain foundation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist the work a little bit so that it's sideways facing me. And I can see all of these beautiful little ridges going down the back. So they're little bumps. That's what I'm going to be working into. Now I'm on the struggle bus here for a second because I made my last chain way too tight. So bear with me as I figure this out. Alright, so it looks like I'm still riding the struggle bus a little bit, but um, bear with me because in a second I'm going to zoom in and go slow-mo so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so what I'm doing um, is going into those ridges, yarning over and pulling up a loop. Going into the ridge, that ridge loop, pulling up a loop. So here we go. Now I'm going to zoom in and go slow-mo. So take a look here at the ridges. So you can see a little bit better now um, the ridge bumps, those beautiful little ridge bumps. So if you turn your work sideways, so you're looking at it from the edge on, go ahead and insert your hook underneath that loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, leave the loop on your hook. It's important to leave the loop on your hook. If you've done crochet, this is going to seem a little weird. But this is the whole tenant, the whole foundation, the whole premise behind Tunisian crochet. So we don't finish off the stitch, we just leave it on the loop and we build up our foundation row for the next row we're going to do, which is super simple. So go ahead and keep building up your foundation row, getting those loops on that hook, and then I'll meet you at the end. All right, well that was short and sweet. <laughs> so I've gone ahead and fast forwarded a little bit and now I have all of my loops on the hook. I'm gonna do a quick count here to see how many loops that I ended up with because I was doing all kinds of crazy stuff with my tight chain. So I actually ended up with around 42. So that's gonna be important. I wanna keep note of that because I wanna make sure that I'm having the correct amount of stitches on my work as I work. 
So uh, this is what you should have. So you should have all these beautiful little loops on your hook ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my tail out of the way. I want to make sure we're not working with our tail yarn. And then I'm going to pick up my working yarn. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop. So in that first stitch, we're just going to chain one. That's called a chain one. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through two. So what that chain one does is lift up the height of your work. So now we're going to yarn over, pull through two, and we're going to do that the entire way down. So here we go. Slow-mo zoom in. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And this is the backwards pass. The backwards pass is the same every single time. Nothing changes. So every time you have all the loops on your hook, you get to the end of your work, you're going to do this backwards pass. You're going to chain one, so you're going to yarn over, pull through one, and then you're going to yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the end of the work until you have one loop left on your hook. Now while I have you trapped here doing your backwards pass, I would love, love, love it if you find any use from this video. If you give it a like, give it a subscribe, give it a comment, that helps me tremendously. So now we're coming to the end of the work here, and now we have one loop left on our hook. And you should have something that looks like this. So we have all these beautiful little stitches here, these little long leg stitches. Let's zoom in and look at here real quick. So we have our, our little legs here. So we have our first stitch that we always skip, then we have our stitches here. And each one of these is a stitch. Each long stitch is something we work into, except for the first one. We always skip that one. So here's our stitch. Here's our front leg of that stitch. So I'm going to zoom in and go slow-mo. So what we're going to do is insert our hook underneath that front leg working in the front and pull up a loop. So we never go to the back of our work with our hook. We always stay in the front for this stitch pattern. Then what I'm going to do for the next stitch, pull the yarn in front, move it out of the way, hold it out of your way, insert your hook into that next stitch, let the yarn loose so it falls in front of the loop. See how it's right there in front of that loop? Hold it with your thumb to keep it in place, yarn over with the yarn coming from the back, and pull up a loop. So our entire pattern, our entire piece is going to be worked in these alternating stitches. We're going to work a normal stitch here. We're going to insert the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then for our next stitch, we're going to make sure that that yarn is in front of the hook, move it out of the way so we can work into that stitch, insert our hook into that next stitch, let it go, make sure it falls in front of the loop, move the yarn to the back, yarn over, pull through, leaving all those loops on the hook. So I'm going to do one more time, so we're going to insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, then for our next stitch, yarn in front, insert, yarn in back, yarn over, pull up a loop. So go ahead and keep alternating those stitches all the way down the length of your fabric. And then once you get to the end, I'll meet you there. Do note that at the end, there is a special stitch that we have to put in. So do your last stitch and then make sure you check back here to see what we're doing.
All right, so we're coming up on the end. I've done my last stitch here. Now what I'm going to do is turn the work towards me. And you see how we have a V here? We're gonna work under both legs of that last stitch. So make sure your hook is under both legs, yarn over, pull up a loop. So that's gonna be the last stitch we do on every single forward pass. And we have something now that looks like this. So we have all these, once again, these beautiful legs that we've put into the stitch work. So now what I'm going to do is do my backwards pass. We're gonna chain one. So we have that yarn over, pull through one, and then we have yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the very end until we have one last loop remaining on our hook. And keep going just like this till you get all the way to the end and I'll meet you there. Feel free to pause, or let it keep rolling. I'm just going to finish out this row. All right, so now we're coming to the end of the work. I have one loop left on my hook, and this is what you should have so far. We're starting to see a little bit of that fabric being built up, a little bit of the stitch definitions. We can't see much now, but we will soon. So if you need to leave your work, go ahead and pull up a really tall loop, take your hook out, and leave it be. I'll show you an easy way to jump back in so you don't get confused about what stitch you need to do next. So I'm gonna show you zoom in here real quick I'm gonna get real close so this stitch here you see how it's long it has two long stitches and then the next one has like a little bump in front of it and then the next one is a long stitch and then the next one has that little bump long stitch bump long stitch bump so that is going to be how we determine what stitch we need to do next so I'm gonna go ahead and insert my hook into this loop pull it up tight and anytime I see a long stitch I'm going to do the yarn in front and then anytime I see a stitch with a bump I'm going to do a normal stitch so now I'm going to move my yarn in front and then do that little purl stitch here so I'm going to yarn over pull up a loop and then the next stitch, which has a bump, I'm gonna do a normal stitch. Next stitch, and then I just repeat. And if you are working through a row, and let's say your dog comes up and wants a butt scratch, or your kid comes up and wants a glass of water, or your husband comes up, it's like, where's my keys? You can easily stop your work and then figure out, okay, look, there's a bump here. I need to do a normal stitch. There's not a bump here, so I need to do a purl stitch. And then you just keep working that way. So it's really easy if you pay attention. Sometimes it helps to stretch the fabric out a little bit to kind of see, because if you have it all bunched up, it can be a little bit hard to discern whether there's a bump or if it's straight. And then you just keep working that way all the way down. And this entire blanket is going to be done just alternating those stitch patterns. So where you have a simple stitch, work a purl stitch. Where you have a purl stitch, you work a simple stitch. And that is the entirety of the blanket. It is super simple, super quick. I finished this blanket in around two hours, I believe. So if you're in a pinch and you need a quick gift for someone, this is definitely the way to go. Now, I did make a preemie blanket, so that's going to affect, you know, obviously if you have 200 stitches, <laughs> it's going to take you a little bit longer to finish a blanket. So keep going this way to the end of the fabric and make sure the very last stitch you put in, we're going to 
come to it here in just a second. So I'm working through doing my pearls and simples. I'm getting to that last stitch. Make sure to count your stitches. And on your last one, make sure you go under both legs of that V. And then do your backwards pass. Chain one, then yarn over, pull through two, all the way to the end. And I'll meet you there. All right, now we're coming to the end of our second row. And now we have one loop on our hook. Boom, perfect. So now we can start to see a little bit more of that pattern coming through. That beautiful honeycomb stitch pattern. In our next row, it's going to be even more obvious after we get done with that. So I'm gonna pull up a loop here a little bit so I can show you what's going on. So we have See these beautiful little U's? So our next row is going to cap off the U, so it's going to turn into like a little hexagon. So let's go ahead and do that row. So once again, I'm going to take a look at my fabric here. I see my legs that I need to work into, and I see this, this stitch here, and I already know what I need to do. So in this first one, it has a bump. I'm going to skip that stitch, but in this first stitch here that has a bump, I'm going to do a simple crochet or a simple stitch. Then I'm going to do a purl. So now that I have my pattern, I know it's simple purl, simple purl, simple purl all the way down. So I just keep alternating those stitches all the way down. And I tell you, this couldn't be easier. And it looks complicated because it's so beautiful, but it is so simple. So keep working that all the way down till you get to the end. Make sure you're counting your stitches. If you started with 42, you should still have 42. When you get to the end, 42 loops on your hook. If you don't, you've missed a stitch somewhere, go back, take a look, and then try to figure out where you've missed that, that little long-legged stitch. All right, I'll see you at the end. All right, so I've gone ahead and fast forwarded a little bit through the backwards pass. I think you guys have heard me beat it enough into your into your head what a backwards pass is. <laughs> now we can see our stitch pattern. Look at that. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. This is gonna be a beautiful blanket. Now we have a whole little honeycomb and the start of a new one. So as we're finishing off one honeycomb row, we're starting another. So it looks really beautiful so far. This is what you should have. And I just think it is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the most beautiful stitches. And when you start working like this is this is it after I've been working for the entire length. I mean, look at that. And sorry for the change in lighting, the, the lighting changed because of the sun moving to the other side of the house. This is later in the day. But this is our, this is the last row. So I finished on a backwards pass. Now I'm ready to finish off the edge. So I've worked the blanket as long as I want it or as tall as I want it. I have all these beautiful little stitches here, this beautiful pattern. And now I'm going to finish off. So we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is, now if you've done any crochet, this is going to be super simple. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to do a row of single crochet all across the top. So we're going to skip our first stitch, always skip that first stitch, and then in our next stitch I'm going to zoom in, go slow-mo, we're going to insert our hook like we would as, as if we were doing a simple stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Now instead of leaving the loop on the hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on that hook. So this is going to start to finish off that edge. And it's going to give us a beautiful finish to the edge. I know um, I've seen a lot of people do slip stitches, but I just don't fancy that as much as I fancy the, the single crochet across the top. I, I tend to notice that the slip stitches make the work a little bit too tight for my taste, so I like doing the single crochets. So I'm going to insert my loop, or insert my hook into that loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then I'm going to yarn over again and pull through both loops on that hook. And I'm going to do that all the way down till I get to the very last stitch, and in that stitch I'm going to do a slip stitch. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get to that part. I've found that when you do a slip stitch on the very last stitch, it makes a beautiful blend from one edge to the next and gives your work a nice finish. So go ahead and in every stitch across the top, place a single crochet. So I'm going to take this time now to ask that if you've done this blanket, if you finished it, I would absolutely love to see what you create. So if you wouldn't mind, feel free to tag me on Instagram. My handle is at Mountaintop Yarn Co. Tag me in your photo. Let me see what you've created. I absolutely love, love, love seeing people's work. I get tagged in work from the yarn that I sell because I create hand-dyed yarn in my shop. And let me tell you, this project that someone tagged me in, I created a custom-dyed yarn set for her to create a gift for one of her friends and her piece of work that she created from the yarn I made for her is probably one of the most beautiful things I've seen in a long time. So I love seeing the creations you guys make from the tutorials, the yarn I make, the patterns I release. I absolutely love seeing that and it makes my whole entire day. So take a moment, snap a photo, throw it on Instagram, throw it on Facebook. I'm on Facebook as well, Mountaintop Yarn. You can find me there. And brighten my day. <laughs> if you have liked this tutorial, give it a like on YouTube. Leave me a comment. Um, subscribe. I'm constantly doing patterns. I'm constantly doing tutorials. And my goal is to get to the point where I can do this full time and every like I get every subscribe I get gets me closer to that goal so the more time I have to do this the more patterns I can make the more yarn I can make and it's it's just my dream so I think it's all we all have dreams and it's important to have those and if we can support each other and gain value from it then absolutely so that's enough rambling it's enough pleading <laughs> and thank you so much for your support for those of you who do choose to subscribe and those of you who choose to like my videos and comment your support means so much to me all right back to the tutorial I'm done I promise we're coming to the last stitch so I'm doing my very last single crochet and in this very last remember we're going to turn our work sideways grab both those legs yarn over and then I'm going to pull that yarn all the way through. So now I'm going to pull up a nice little loop here and look at that. Oh my goodness. It is done. <clears throat> it is finished. So what you can do at this point is you can switch to a crochet hook if you choose to and add a beautiful border. But for me, I like the way this looks. So I'm going to end it off here. So I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to pull out a generous little tail once again because we want to have something to weave those ends in with. Give it a snip. 
pull that yarn through and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread my tapestry needle and then I'm going to weave in the ends. Now if this is your first time ever doing Tunisian crochet or any kind of um, fiber work, I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends. I'm going to give you some little tips and tricks. So when I weave in ends, I like to be as chaotic as possible. So I think that if I weave in ends in a chaotic way, some way in my brain, this is what I think, that it has less of a chance of coming undone and coming unraveled. So I'll go left, I'll go right, I'll go up, I'll go down, I'll go through. But one of the major, major things that I do is once I get, you know, the majority of that, that tail in place and I'm weaving it in, I'll go back and split the fibers of that tail and weave that yarn in on itself. So I'll stick the needle through the yarn and I'll make sure that when I'm poking that needle through, I'm splitting the fibers. And I'll give you a good example of that here in just a second. So see how I just pushed it through and it went in between like into that stitch instead of under or around it. So I'm splitting those fibers and getting that yarn kind of meshed up into itself. Split, boom, right in the middle. So with natural fibers like wool or alpaca or angora, fibers like that tend to have a little bit of um, a barb on them. So when you look at it under a microscope or you look at it very closely, you can feel the texture on the yarn and those tend to grip each other very nicely. So when you do that, it kind of melds into itself and grips onto itself. Now with acrylic yarn or any kind of man-made fiber like nylon or polyester or anything like that, you're going to have a little bit of a harder time because they don't have those natural barbs. So for this instance, I was using a yarn that had acrylic in it. It wasn't majority acrylic, but it did have acrylic in it. So in those instances, you want to make sure that you weave those ends in good because acrylic doesn't naturally bond to itself whenever it's put through normal wear and tear. It won't felt together. So I like to weave in as much as I possibly can because I want these blankets to last as long as they possibly can, right? Like nothing's worse than spending so much time on a beautiful blanket and doing a very short little tail and then three months later the whole thing's come undone. So spend a little bit of time. I know I can tend to get a little bit antsy and want to, you know, I want to hurry up and finish this project because I've been working on it. And I'll skimp on the uh, weaving in. And I've only done that twice. And twice was enough to learn a lesson. So take a tip from me. Learn from my experience. Weave in your ends super well. And you'll notice here that I'm going back and I'm just splitting all those fibers. Like just getting that all nice and tangled on itself. And go ahead and trim your last little bit of work here. Boom. Guess what? Now we're done. <laughs> so exciting finishing a project. Give me all that serotonin, please. Thank you. Look at that. Look at how beautiful. This is going to make a lovely little blanket. Beautiful little blanket gift for someone in need. And I am so excited. I can't wait. I know I'll never see their face. I know I'll never see how much joy it brings them. But just knowing that it's out there in the world for someone to enjoy is, is a beautiful thought. So there's the reverse side of the blanket. Still just as beautiful. And that's it. Thank you so much for following my tutorial. And I really hope that your blanket brings so much joy to whoever you decide to gift it to or if you decide to keep it yourself. I hope it's in your family for many, many years. Thank you so much, and until next time, bye!